Thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Nada Youssef. In an effort to better help the 5,600 stroke patients hospitalized each year in Cuyahoga County, Cleveland Clinic has brought one of the very first mobile stroke units in the country to the city of Cleveland, Ohio, in a total of 11 Northeast Ohio communities. The unit was first trialed in Germany, but Cleveland Clinic is the first in the U.S. to be rolling out this type of program. These specially equipped stroke units are outfitted with all the necessary elements of comprehensive stroke care, helping save lives with immediate treatment to the patient. And to bring you this expert advice and to answer all your questions, today we have with us Dr. Blake Pulatko, Operations Director of the Mobile Stroke Unit. Thank you so much for being here today. Thanks for having me. Yes, it's nice and loud, so sorry about that. But during this Facebook Live, if you guys have any questions, make sure you put the comments uh, your questions in the comment section below. I have my phone here and I'll take a look and I'll ask Dr. Baleko as they come in. So let's go ahead and take a look inside. Sounds great. All right. After you. All right. So it's much quieter in here. So stroke is the leading cause of death in the U.S. and a leading cause of disability. And the stroke care, every minute counts, so you can get treatment as fast as possible. It's estimated that we lose about 2 million brain cells a minute. That's so this is critical. This is very critical. So time is of the essence when it comes to stroke. Can you talk about the importance of immediate care as needed? Sure. And again, like I said, thanks, thanks for having us, and thanks for being here and, and tuning in. It's uh, Stroke Awareness Month in May, so yes. this is good timing. Um, as far as the, the time uh, that we have to treat someone for stroke, there's a couple different kinds of stroke which we'll talk about, um, but really time is brain. And that's what we say over and over and over again. Um, exactly like what you said, we lose a lot of neurons every single minute that our brain does not get enough blood. Sure. And so I think it's extremely important, which is why this mobile stroke treatment unit exists, to try to deliver stroke care to the patients as fast as possible. Right. And luckily with this unit, we're actually able to go to where the patients are and actually give them care, whether that be at home, at a restaurant, at work, at school. Um, and so that's really what we're trying to do is deliver the fastest care, but also the very best care that we possibly can as, as early as we can. Sure. So let's talk about the symptoms of a stroke. So first of all, before you get this call, like what are the symptoms of stroke? And can you talk about Be Fast? Sure. Um, the acronym that we use is Be Fast. Mm -hmm. um, and so to go through Be Fast, because we have to recognize that someone's having a stroke before we can kind of alarm uh, all the, the unit and yes. everybody to go and, and treat them. So um, the B in BFAST stands for balance. So any sudden loss or change in balance is something that's concerning. Okay. Um, e stands for eyes. So any loss of vision in one eye or both eyes, um, or if you start to see double vision. Again, remember that these are all very acute sudden symptoms that we're looking for. Sure. Um, the F is for face. Most people are more familiar with this. So if you have any facial drooping on one side, um, that's obviously alarming. Mm -hmm. um, the A is for arm, which I include leg in there as well. Okay. Um, but what you want to do is if you're concerned that you or someone else is having a stroke and there may be some weakness, if you have someone raise up their arms and you see that one of their arms is drifting down, that's concerning. And again, you can do the same thing with the legs. So okay. any type of motor weakness on one side. Okay. Um, the S is for speech, so any slurring of your speech, um, but also not just slurring, but inability to get out the right words or inability to understand what's being spoken to you. Mm -hmm. And then T is obviously the most important, and that's time, time which is what we've talked about. Right. So I encourage everybody not to dismiss some of these symptoms and not to think that they can get to an emergency department faster than calling 911. Sure. So we always recommend calling 911 first. Great. So you mentioned earlier there are two uh, types of strokes. Let's Correct. go ahead and talk about that. Yeah, so the, the two main types of stroke that we have, and obviously there's a lot of subtypes, um, mm -hmm. are called ischemic strokes, which is either a lack of blood flow or decreased blood flow to certain areas of the brain. Um, when this happens, obviously that brain tissue is damaged, and if it persists for a certain amount of time, it can actually lead to what we call a stroke. Um, and the other type of stroke that we see uh, is called a hemorrhagic stroke. Okay. And so this is a type of stroke where there's actually bleeding into the brain because one of the small blood vessels may rupture. Um, and these two types of stroke uh, can present somewhat similar in those symptoms that we talked about, but the management is very different. So can you manage both? strokes here in we this can. unit? Yes, both ischemic and hemorrhagic strokes. We're fully equipped to do both of those here in the unit. Okay, so how is this dispatched? When someone gets uh, a 911 call, yes. dispatcher, then when you find out it's a stroke, this comes along the ambulance? Correct. What happens, and another reason why it's important to call 911, yeah. is then the dispatch happens simultaneously with 
normal EMS. So we will get dispatched at the same time if there's a high concern that someone could be having a stroke. And typically we arrive uh, on scene because there's only one of us a little bit later. Yeah. And so it gives the local EMS a chance to evaluate the patient and they can either let us know, yes, we do think that this patient could be having a stroke okay. or no, we think that something else is going on, they call us off. If they think that it's reasonable, um, then we go ahead and we come on scene and start the whole process. Sure. So this is the only uh, mobile stroke unit that Cleveland Clinic has, is it that is. correct? Yep. There okay. have been some uh, talks about expansion. Right yes. now, this is what we have. Okay, great. So let's talk about some of the benefits of having this uh, stroke unit. I mean, sure. first thing, time is the first thing that I think about, right? Correct. Yeah. Um, it, yes, it's basically delivering a comprehensive stroke uh, management system or an emergency uh, stroke emergency system right to the patient like we talked sure. about. So instead sure. of the transfer time to get someone from wherever they start having stroke symptoms into the emergency department and then notifying the correct team, sure. we actually bring it to them. And then where is this transported right back to the hospital? Because I know sometimes transfers do happen. Correct. So the nice part about this is um, we as stroke neurologists, um, which we'll go into in a minute, can actually evaluate the patient real time uh, through telemedicine. And then what we can do is help direct where the patient may need to go based on symptoms. So it kind of uh, eliminates maybe some transfers after. If someone goes to an emergency department and then they need to be transferred after that, we can kind of cut out that middleman. Absolutely. Um, and so that's regardless of, you know, uh, it's patient preference as far as where they would like to go. Right. Um, we do take people to all the hospitals throughout uh, the Cleveland area. So okay. it's not just specific to the Cleveland Clinic. And so it, where is this house? It's in a main campus here in Cleveland? So it depends. Uh, okay. It depends on where the crew is and what's going on, but uh, usually it's centralized uh, to Cleveland and then we make it a little bit east and west. Um, and like you said, we have 11 different municipalities that, that we can reach out to. So Excellent. that's where we're at. So let's talk about the crew. Sure. Who, who, who is going to be here when the um, unit arrives? Yes. So we have four crew members plus uh, the doc on screen. Okay. And so I guess there's five of us total. Um, what happens is, and I don't know if you want to turn back around, but the patient is actually delivered in, um, and we can come this way. So the patient's delivered in through these back doors and loaded on this stretcher here. Um, whenever the patient comes in, uh, the crew that's on the truck is composed of four people. So one of those is a nurse um, who is critically trained. And then we have an EMT and a paramedic. And then we have a CT tech, so someone who runs our CAT scan. Okay. So those four people pretty much drive this whole process. Um, we're just a, a doc in the box or someone on screen that helps kind of evaluate the patient, but they really do the, the legwork here. Okay. Hi, Dana. <laughs> so we see someone on screen, can you explain? So this is um, where the doctor would show up. You would not physically be here. Correct. You can be called right through that screen. Right. Unfortunately, okay. we don't have enough neurologists uh, in, in, in uh, the U.S. to be able to go out everywhere. So right. what we've utilized is telemedicine, and Dana's done a great job at helping us with that. But um, what we do is we utilize telemedicine to really be able to be remote, but obviously be able to beam in and do a, a very good assessment. So this is actually a very state-of-the-art camera and technology that we can use. Sure. And so we can do the whole patient evaluation and assess for some of those stroke symptoms um, right here by video. Excellent. So this camera is where she's seeing us. Correct. And that's where the patient would be right here. So we'll be able that's to see correct. any drooping, any of the symptoms that we talked about earlier. Yes. And you can actually zoom in quite a bit. So oh, it, okay. gets, uh, it gets a little a little bit too close sometimes. So yes. Um, but we can do a very, a very good assessment. So at the same time that a patient is coming in here and we start the assessment, there's a lot of other things that are going on. Yes. So they're also trying to get IVs placed um, for any medications that may be given. We do labs. If you can see here, we have IV, pump, IV pumps. Um, we have lab equipment we can monitor the vital signs here so everything is is equipped obviously this is still an ambulance yes. um, it just has a couple extra features sure. um, the the biggest feature that this has that separates it from anything else is what's over here uh, the cat scan all right so if you can see the cat scan actually i'll just switch back over yeah, here and open this up a little bit so that we can see so this cat scan will actually move all the way forward um, once we're on a level surface and it comes right up to where the patient's head is. And so we can actually scan them right there where they're at. And this is really what makes this unit unique from a traditional ambulance. Um, this allows us to see, is someone already having a big stroke? Yeah. Is someone having a hemorrhagic stroke? Do they have any bleeding in their brain, which is very important. And then also we have the capability to actually look at all the blood vessels of the head with this CT scanner to see if we can actually see a clot. 
and obviously all these things direct where we're going to go from there. I mean, this is immediate. You it can is. find out what kind of stroke you're having. It's literally sliding up here, the patient's head's right here. Within five to ten minutes, um, this is all completed. That's excellent. And yeah. then I know you mentioned earlier the lab work that you guys have, and then you have TPA, clot busting yes. medications. Let's talk about when that is needed. So for ischemic strokes, um, yes. someone that may have a blood clot, um, obviously we have a certain amount of time, again, we always go back to time, right. on how quickly we can administer a medication called TPA, okay. or a clot busting medication. The hope is the earlier that we get this medication administered, the better chance that it has to go up and actually start dissolving on that clot and restore blood flow to the brain. Yes. So the faster we can do that, obviously the best chance we have of a good outcome. And sure. delivering it with a mobile stroke unit like this, yes. um, in real time, as fast as we can at the spot where the patient starts having symptoms, obviously gives us the best chance of a good recovery. That's amazing. So time is of the essence. This yes. is very, very important. So you can do everything here that you can do in a hospital. Are we missing anything? Um, we are missing some things. Uh, okay. We're missing a lot of the people that are involved in the, yeah. in the care afterwards. Yeah. Um, but really, it helps us triage. So we can do some of the acute care here and then triage if there needs to be more acute care afterwards. Sure. So it really helps with that. But um, it is very well equipped and, and it helps us manage that acute stroke situation as well as we can. And time being the, the biggest issue with stroke, this is critically important. Yes. And this is amazing, amazing. Thank you so much for your of time. Course. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Yes. And to learn more about stroke or the mobile stroke unit, please visit clevelandclinic.org slash stroke. And for more health news and information from Cleveland Clinic, make sure you're following us on Facebook, Twitter, uh, the uh, Snapchat username at Cleveland Clinic, just one word. Thank you. We'll see you again next questions? time. Yes, there's still many. Okay. <laughs>